Welcome to this presentation from the Wisconsin First Detector Network. This video was adapted from a Wisconsin First Detector Network training session. In this video, you'll hear Brian Huddleston from the Plant Disease Diagnostic Clinic talk about Dutch elm disease. Let's talk a little bit about the nightmare on Elm Street, which is uh, Dutch elm disease. And I think this photo from the movie is quite apropos given what a devastating disease this has been and continues to be here in the U.S. And, and here in Wisconsin. This is the disease of elm, and in particular, American elm, which is our native species, is extremely susceptible. This is a lethal disease for the most part on American elm. The, um, and, and the reason it, it was such a problem is that for a long, long time, if you go into a lot of American cities, there's an elm street in the city, and that's because in most American cities, elm trees were the primary street tree in most of the United States, certainly in the east and in the Midwest, and certainly in particular areas out on the West Coast, elms are very, very prevalent. You saw streets that look like these. The nice thing about American elm that has this beautiful base shape, so if you plant it on both sides of the street, you get this cathedral sort of look. And most of the streets in America look like this around the turn of the last century. It was used extensively as a street tree, but unfortunately, Back around 1926, 1928, there was an introduction of a fungus called Ophiostoma ulmi. It's the Dutch elm disease, or one of two Dutch elm disease fungi, that was introduced on logs that were coming in from Europe, and they were uh, destined, most likely, veneer logs that came in, but they are harboring both the fungus, this is a picture of one of several reproductive structures that it can produce, and this little blob of white here is actually a blob of spores that it's producing. And the other important component is an insect component. Uh, on these logs that were brought into the U.S., it's most likely the European uh, elm bark beetle that was an issue. And there's also a native species, though, this insect that will move this fungus around as well. And this got established, probably came in through the port of New York. The first recording of this disease in the United States was in 1930 in Ohio. Uh, the original description of the disease, and the reason it's called Dutch elm disease, was that it was originally described in Holland in the 1920s, around 1921, although that, the disease had been in Europe much longer than that. There were reports way back close to the turn of the century, certainly in the, the 1910s of the disease being relatively widespread in the Netherlands, France, that particular area. The fungus is most likely of Asian origin because we do find resistant trees amongst Asian species of elm, and there's some speculation that it probably came from the Himalayas, Burma, somewhere in that area with a little bit more higher elevation, fairly tolerant to cold temperatures. But it got introduced into the U.S., again, roughly the mid to late 20s, and was pretty much, this species was pretty much kept under control until around World War II, when there just wasn't enough money to er continue to eradicate infected trees. And then it really got going and spread rapidly thereafter. There is another species of the fungus called Ophiostoma novo ulmi. That one was likely introduced into the United States somewhere in the southern Great Lakes region, probably around Chicago in the 1940s. That particular fungus, that species, is much more aggressive than the initial one that was introduced in the 1920s. And that one spread both to the east coast and west coast extremely rapidly. It was on both coasts by roughly the 1970s or 80s, wiping out elm trees as it went. And so the fungus gets into the tree. It's brought in by these bark beetles. The female comes in, lays eggs, and then the larvae, you can see one here. And again, the female kind of comes in and tunnels in and lays eggs. The larvae will hatch and eat their way in these little side tunnels. So it's very distinctive sort of spider pattern under the bark. And eventually they will mature. Interestingly, the fungus in these galleries, these little tunnels, will produce this little fruiting structure that I mentioned before. It sticks out into those galleries, produces a blob of the spores. One, uh, this fungus produces lots of types of spores, but one of the types of spores in that blob of, of whitish material call them the lollipops of death because that's kind of what they look like. And then the insects will pick up the spores in their body and as they mature, leave the tree and visit other trees, they'll drop the uh, fungus off as they tunnel in. 
And what we tend to see is a discoloration of the wood under the bark where the infection has occurred. This is actually an attempt on the part of the tree to try to stop the infection. Um, in particularly red oaks, the fungus induces for, uh, formation of what are called pyloses, which are cells in the tree that kind of balloon into the water conducting tissue to try to stop the movement of the fungus. Fortunately, that doesn't work, and the tree continues to do that. And in part, it's basically strangling or committing suicide itself. Um, it's in part um, responsible for its ultimate death. The bad part about the fungus is that it is moved around by root grafts. And so if you think about American streets with all these elms, all those trees were root grafted. So it was initially brought in by the insect into one tree, moved down the tree, into the roots, moved through the root grafts, and just moved from tree to tree to tree. And that's why in many areas you can see where this has occurred here, disease came in in the tree on the left, and now you can start to see branch die back on the elm tree on the right, and it's likely moved through on a root graft. And again, if you take a look at the landscapes, we started out with you know, beautiful elm trees. Dutch elm comes in, kills them all off. And again, another same shot of one street where it has this beautiful cathedral sort of look. And after Dutch elm disease came in, a totally different landscape. So this is a very, very difficult disease to, to uh, control. We continue to see problems. There are still a lot of American elms out there. We tend to see a lot of volunteer small trees that will cause problems and um, uh, are small trees that will come up and then as they get to a certain size, about six to eight inches in diameter, they will basically be killed off and become infected and um, will succumb to the disease. I guess if you want to look for a bright spot in this whole disease, we tend to see a lot of morels produced around the base of dead elms and uh, so we have an increased likelihood of finding those particular fungi. But unfortunately, the American elm is not a real useful tree for us. There are some hybrids and some American elms that have been bred for resistance, but even those trees. The crosses with Asian elms are pretty resistant. Those are probably useful trees, but they don't have that lovely shape, that day shape that makes them a great street tree. Uh, the native species, American elms, that have been bred for resistance, they still tend to get the disease. So at this point, if you want to grow an American elm single specimen tree, and you may want to consider fungicide injections to protect the tree, even if it's a resistant variety. And this is how you get a hold of me if you have any questions. Thanks for watching this video from the Wisconsin First Detector Network. To learn more about our network or to access additional information about invasive species in Wisconsin, please visit our website or contact us.